everybody. Um, I'm going to do a very quick reading from a story uh, I wrote recently. It's called Continue to Live. My entire family died over one weekend. Perished. There was mom, dad, my sisters, my brothers, my aunt, my uncle, my grandma, on my dad's side. A great uncle who wasn't so great and was, in fact, a parasite. And two dogs, both called Barney, the quote marks being part of their names. So Tobias and I had plenty to be stressed about. The flesh-eating virus that had ravaged half the country was finally in our state. He was loading up the car with essentials. His head looked like a lasagna. It always looks like some sort of pasta dish when he's stressed. It was basically layers of egg, cheese and beef. I watched Tobias load blankets and clothes into the back of the car. He loved me. His love was big and fat and always hard. His love made a mess and he had to clean it up with a rag. Jesus, I'm so sorry, he'd say, all sheepish. I gone got my love everywhere again. He loved me so much that he bought me flowers every day for the past five years. Sometimes, before bed, he'd get down on his knees and serenade me to sleep. Other times, he'd leave me small love poems in my pockets that I'd unearth at work. Shelley, Byron, the Romantics. Then follow up with a text. Did you get my note? He loved me with all his heart. But before we move on, I'd like to say this. There's something wrong with me. I like to trace my wrongness in this little timeline of events like the ones you get in history books. 1993 just says eating disorder. 1994, the year of hiding food down the back of radiators. 1995, the year I fell in love with Val Kilmer's lips. I dream of his lips in Tombstone and Batman Forever, floating around my room, smooching at the air. And then there was 2006, the year I had surgery. My mom, dead now, said my surgery was a gory one, Reminiscent of something in a butcher's shop.